I'll be scared to stab somebody. You know what I like to do in fights? If I can, just kick a motherfucker in their chest. <laughs> shit is satisfying. You hear that air come out? <sighs> so, ah, bah, oh, oh. Like when, what was that? Remember the baseball game where that old man rushed the pitcher? <laughs> Did y'all see that old man rush the pitcher? The media is so racist, they all blame the pitcher. How could he beat up that old man? What the fuck is he supposed to do, man? <laughs> old man was rushing him. He ain't supposed to let a motherfucker rush you just because they old. Oh, man. Look like he could handle his. Because it wasn't like he was running up to shake his hand. He looked mad. Nigga! <laughs> Shit, I'm young and healthy. I don't rush Puerto Rico. What the fuck was he thinking? Fuck, he didn't get stabbed. The motherfucker was merciful because he didn't beat him up. He just guided that motherfucker like but like judo, you know, in judo, you use your opponent's momentum against him. He just, just took that next hit. <sighs> ah! <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry, everybody. I lost my head. Goddamn right. Hmm? That's my fantasy. I don't want an old white man to rush me. Just roll, roll the pops! Bow! <laughs> Ready? Oh, sir. <laughs> it echoed, right? All right. <laughs> Say something, Andre. Hello? Oh, sir. That shit is crazy. Do that. Do my, my mic like that. Huh? Huh? <laughs> what are you busting it up like that? <laughs> <laughs> I like that dude, man. I feel like personally responsible for him being a star. I do. Me and Justin were on Star Search together. I, nobody ever believes me, and yet, if you watch the tape, you'll be surprised. Champion Dave Chappelle received. I remember that shit. Mm, nah, I know. Actually, I'll tell you the truth. I got four stars my first time out, three and three quarter stars my second time out, three and a half stars my third time out, and I think that's when I got beat. That shit is it. You know who beat me? Exactly. <laughs> Nah, he was a funny dude. What's his face? But, uh, <laughs> DJs, nothing phases a DJ. What, make, what songs are DJs like? You just sick of everything, aren't you? <laughs> At home last night, <laughs> with Nicola Timothy. She made a song about Ben. Give it to me, baby. I woke my wife up like that. Give it, give it to me, baby. Give it to me, baby. That stuff, that sweet, funky stuff. <laughs> That's what we called it, that sweet, funky stuff. Give me some of that sweet, funky stuff. Of course, it's sweet yet funky. Okay. Shakespeare could have done no better. Thou sweet but funky bottom. <laughs> I said dick hole on TV last year. I said that. You don't remember that? When play haters? They show Rosie O'Donnell's picture and he said, she wears underwear with dick holes. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that. You can't say dick hole. Every, every once in a while I think about these things and it just makes me giggle. Who's a dick hole? This is so stupid. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. All right. Some more applause for Dave, please. Well, welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to Chappelle Show. Thanks for joining us. I gotta adjust my pants. I think my penis popped out of my dick hole. Anyway. Anyway, folks, welcome back to the show. <laughs>
Welcome back to the show. You know, <laughs> you know, folks. <laughs> the other night, the other night I was watching ESPN. No, this is gonna be great, man. We got, we got, uh, we got some good shit going on. So, uh, all right, let's let's do the damn thing. As a matter of fact, if y'all the crowd, I'm gonna show you what Wayne is gonna do on Thursday. I'll let you see it before people home see it, because this shit is incredible. <laughs> Then we're having a whole meeting backstage about what hat I'm supposed to wear. So let's all agree on the hat. I'll take it to the people. Some real democracy. Let me see, Andre. We got this hat. And a hush goes over the crowd. No, let's do it. Okay. Hold on. I didn't even look up the floor. Give, give my hats a chance. Everybody hate my head so much. I gotta have a hat on all the time. Yeah. Word, word, y'all like this shit? Okay. Okay. All right, now this is a hat. I'm just kidding, y'all. All right, here we go. Y'all sure about this hat? She look like it should come with a broom or something. My zookeeper in this motherfucker. Anybody feed her animal yet? The crowd has spoken. They stopped me. Two hats into the game. All right, but hold on. Let me make sure it takes out. You can't, can you see my eyes? Just, if you can pull it back just a tiny. Can I just be mysterious for one week? <laughs> no? Huh? No? What's so great about my eyeballs, nigga? I can't. What's <laughs> up, everybody? Welcome to the show. All right, I'll figure it out. All right, what about okay. this? What about this? Yeah, work. But don't it look too puffy in the top? Nigga, my head stops like down here somewhere, and the hat's all. All right, all right. I'm ready. <laughs> go a little bit. See, Neil says it's too puffy. Hold on, let me see you now. I need a mirror out this month. I can't just keep making y'all turn the TV on. Can you see my face? Yeah, that's good. Is it too puffy? No, that's, that's too long. Let's okay. <laughs> show with the attitude. You gotta be, sometimes we gotta be like, the fuck is up? Tonight's show. And that's real. All right, hold on. Hey, this shit look. Someone <laughs> says, price is right for real. First half, second half. <laughs> she said, give me that camouflage hat. Black people need the camouflage too. That's why I like wearing just the camouflage hat, nigga. Skies is my thoughts. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck I'm thinking. I don't know how much longer I'm going to get away with this. I'm just, every Wednesday, I'll be like, they're going to turn on me this week. I've, I've gone too far. And that puppet pulled his dick out. I said, it's over, baby. It's fucking over, man. <laughs> Even my kids looked at me like, ugh, nigga, what is wrong? <laughs> I got a stand-up special coming out on Showtime. That's my whole strategy. I stick to obscure networks. <laughs> That's my, for real, man, there's a lot of good networks nobody's fucking with. Look out for me on Animal Planet. I think I might do a movie. I might do a movie on that one, but whoever. Whoever, hey, whoever will have me, nigga, I'm ready to play. Let's play. I just want to do what I want to do. Whoever let me do it, fuck it. I'm rolling with you. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Tonight on a special Weather Channel presentation. Dave Chappelle tells it like it is. You know what's funny about the letters I get? I get letters for shit that I didn't even say. Dear Clay Central, that nigger said that Bush stole the election. At home? <laughs> Not on the show. <laughs> it's 
Newscast Dinner Talk. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember that the guy went up and pleaded the fifth the whole time? You didn't see it on TV. Damn, black people have got to start watching the news, please. <laughs> We've got to start informing ourselves. This should be happening all around. These niggas never. We're the last to hear about it. If they could bring slavery back and it could be coming back on Wednesday, you niggas would not even know this shit was coming. <laughs> Slavery's coming back. Word, I didn't even. Oh, I was watching fucking Steve Harvey show. Oh, damn. Why didn't anybody tell me? We gotta st watch the news. <laughs> damn. Black people do not watch the news. It's incredible. Even BET got rid of the news. Some niggas aren't watching this. It's a waste of our valuable time. It's true. BET cut the news out. Travis Smiley, take a break. <laughs> Put a Sanford and Son rerun on. <laughs> Snickers are not watching the news. Okay, Dave? Yeah, I'm sorry. Where's that? Okay. okay oh, it's a generic tone. It's a generic tone. All right, ready? Uh, and take it at five, four, three. If you thought that was funny, why don't you take a look at this? No, don't put that. It's too much pressure. Because you don't know where to put that. They might put it up the wax sketch and be like, I didn't even think that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never got to be careful. Can't ever put no pressure on you. You got to keep expectations low. <laughs> I never went to college, okay? So this, I said an intro sketch like that. All right, this is the best I could do. Shit. <laughs> Uh, folks, I could sit here and talk about this next sketch for days, but why don't you just watch it? <laughs> Sometimes I get lonely and scared. Uh, oh, hi. Listen. <laughs> what I do? My mic? Yeah, look at it. Just look at it. Some fuzz is on it. That's all right. This is, this is reality. <laughs> I could say if it was a pubic head jetting out of it. Hey! What the hell did that get on here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, another generic tool? Yeah, Shit. All right. Fuck. Can I do it like Soul Train to sit in the audience like Don Clemens used to do? Folks, my next. <laughs> the Commodores. <laughs> you know Don Clemens is always be doing. <laughs> Welcome back to Soul Train. <laughs> that one Chinese lady would be dancing. <laughs> Everybody watch Soul Train notice her because she's so weird. It's like a black party with one Asian lady would dance her ass off to this so crazy bud. Okay, they both said. Soul Train dancers. Sookie. Whatever name is. I don't know what name is. Oh, does this have a name like that? Silky or something? Is this it? I'm done, right? Good night. Oh, okay. I don't know. I was just waiting. Think I was dancing. I was dancing. <laughs> God don't understand me. I wish I could dance at work with you. It should be legal for black people to do certain things at work. Dancing should be one. We should just be able to get up from our desks. And I have to worry about if they understand the nap. And we need to be able to take a nap after lunch. If they just come in for lunch, you get right in the skip. I had mac and cheese, nigga. do that after dinner they undo their pants. That's just... <laughs> I've not seen white people do that at dinner. We eat at your white friend's house and they were like, oh, it's delicious. <laughs> and undo their pants. It happens. A lot of white people are like, what? Sometimes at black dinner after we eat, we'll unbutton our pants. That means the cooking was... Hey, my white person might go, that was magnifique. They go, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And then fall asleep right on the table.
Him, you don't know that he's a guy that say the logo at the end of my show. You, you know that? Say it there, man. This voice is fucking kill me. Say it one, just say it one time. I'm rich, bitch! <laughs> Holy shit. That's the only dude I ever was. Nigga, just do my answering machine for me, please. Please. And then I was going on the back roads and I saw Starbucks. I said, let me pull up with Starbucks and get some directions. And I ran inside Starbucks and a guy working behind the counter was gay. And as soon as I saw him, I was like, <laughs> He's not worried about that. <laughs> Saying. You know what he said? He said Dave Chappelle's jokes were an affront to the manhood of all gay men. Huh? What the fuck does that mean? Is he insinuating that I don't think that gay men are men? I know they're men. In fact, what could be manly than fucking another guy in the ass? It's the most gangster shit I've ever heard of. I'm 
I was joking. <laughs> she was going to have sex with me anyway. She was taking her clothes off. She took her shoes off. I said, oh. <laughs> Those are pretty ass fit. <laughs> really? You don't have to take off another stitch. <laughs> I could just fuck those feet. <laughs> she was like, oh, David. <laughs> I was on the other side. <laughs> with a friend of mine, he's a white guy, you know, we were just hanging out, and, and we were lost in the city, you know, we were smoking a joint. Now, I don't know if it was a coincidence that we were lost in the high and shit, but... <laughs> my white buddy, he was smoking a joint, he... <gasps> Dave, Dave, it's the goddamn cops. I'm going to ask him for directions. I said, Chip, no! Chip, don't do it! It was too late. He was walking over there. This man was high as shit. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Touching him and Chip. Excuse me. I need some information. Uh, start confessing things he shouldn't confess. I'm a little high. All I want to know which way is 3rd Street? The cop was like, hey, take it easy. You're on 3rd Street. You better be careful. Go ahead, move it. Move it. And that's all that happened. That's the end of the story. Now, I know that's not amazing to some of you, but she has one of these black fellows. That shit is fucking incredible, isn't it? I'm saying a black man would never dream of talking to the police high. That's a waste of weed. <laughs> Serious. I mean, I'd be scared to talk to the police when I'm sleepy. They fuck around and get the wrong ideas. You know? <gasps> oh my God. That nigga was on PCP, Johnson. I had to use necessary force. You saw him. No, no, no paperwork. Just... Just sprinkle some crack on him. Let's get out of here. That's how it is. But at the time, I didn't think there was anything racial about it. I was just like, man, Chip, you got fucking lucky. You better be careful. But then another time, me and Chip are driving. Now, I'm not driving. Chip is driving, and he's driving a little crazy. He's been drinking. Now, I don't like to let my friends drive drunk, but, you know, I was smoking a joint. I couldn't really say shit to the guy. And we get at a red light. We stop at a red light. And a car pulls up next to us. And I'll never forget it. Chippy looks at me, he's all drunk, and she's like, Dave, I'm gonna race him. <laughs> I knew it was a bad idea, but I was high. I tried to explain to him it was a bad idea, but all that came out was, well, nigga, sometimes you gotta race, I don't know. <laughs> Man, that light turned green and Chip took off. Zigzagging and shit so no one could pass the other car. I didn't even know he was racing. <laughs> then the police seen us and pulled us over. They understand I'm scared as shit. I mean, come on, the car smells like weed. I've been speeding. This man is fucking drunk. I was scared. Chip was not scared at all. It was weird. He didn't even turn his radio down. Isn't that weird a little bit? I mean, if you get pulled over, wouldn't you turn your radio down? Nobody want to get their ass beat to a soundtrack and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Chip had the music blasting, we're not gonna take it. Look at the music, Dave, just relax. Close your butt cheeks. Relax. Let me do the talking. You wanna know what he said? This is almost exactly what he said. I, I couldn't believe it. He says, oh, oh. Sorry, officer, I... I didn't know I couldn't do that. I was fucking shocked. The cop said, well, now you know. Just get out of here. Just get the fuck out of here. She said, okay, I'll, I will, sir. Thank you. What? What's wrong with you, Dave? I didn't know I couldn't do that. He said, that was good, wasn't it? Because I did know I couldn't do that. <laughs> Good thing to say that because they know we know the law. Every black dude in this room is a qualified paralegal and shit. He knows the law. And if one of us even start to do something wrong, an old black man would pop out of nowhere. Nigga, don't do that. That's five to ten. Watch out. <laughs> Well, we know the laws and the penalties. Got chipped didn't even know he couldn't race. I'm not saying I don't like police. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm just scared of them. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we want to call them too. Somebody broke into my house once. It's a good time to call them, but I, I don't know. Uh -uh. The house is too nice. It ain't a real nice house, but they never believe I live there. Oh, he's still here. Oh, my God. Open and shut case, Johnson. I saw this once before when I was a rookie. Apparently this nigger broke in and hung up pictures of his family everywhere. Well, let's sprinkle some crack on him and get out of here. Oh, you know, that's that, that's that whole brutality thing. It's, see, that's common knowledge, man. There was a time when only minorities really knew about that. I'm not going to say white people didn't believe us, but you were a little skeptical. You're a little skeptical. I mean, I don't blame you. And then Newsweek printed any news truth. And then Newsweek wife was like, oh my God. <laughs> Honey, did you see this? Apparently the police have been beating up Negroes like hotcakes. It's in the May issue. I mean, really, how could you know though? How could anyone else know? You know, I mean, maybe you should have seen something a little suspicious. Don't you think it was like a little suspicious? Just a little suspicious? Every dead black person the police find has crack sprinkled on them. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. Who gets shot and sprinkles crack on themselves? Nobody will come here. Bam! Oh, oh. I don't want to leave no mysteries. But I'm a paranoid guy, you know, that's how I am. I am. I'll be scared to call 911 for anything, even if it's like a fire or anything. Because they take those phone calls. I see the shows, they tape them, and then they play them on television. That's fucked up. Now, I'll say anything if I'm scared. That shit is private, you know what I mean? What if I get killed? I start playing that 911 tape on the news, I'm dead. I can't explain myself to my buddies and shit. We watch the news. We have Reg Chapman on the scene. Reg, what's going on out there? Oh, it takes a guy on the scene a minute. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Hi, yes. We just got hold of a copy of Dave Chappelle's Frantic. 911 emergency call. Remember, viewers, some of this language is disturbing. <laughs> Hello, emergency. Help! Help, motherfucker, they're coming to get me! Just calm down, sir. Where are you? Oh, oh, I shit on myself. I can't stop crying. They play that shit 30, 40 times a day. All my buddies will be at my funeral looking at me. You know Dave shit on himself right before the I saw it on the news. Died crying like a bitch. In the old days. See, I, used, I talk like that. 
Not all the time, but if somebody put the pressure on me, fuck it, I gotta, I gotta cut loose. <laughs> Maybe the police pull me over, I'll, I'll talk crazy. Son, son, do you know why we pulled you over? <laughs> nah, because I'm black, see, that's right. Nah. <laughs> I do it. It's not illegal to talk like that. How do they know I don't talk like that every day? Stop talking like that. Stop talking like white copper. Nah. That's how I talk, see. You got to make life interesting like that because the shit is flimsy. I was taken to the ghetto one time. That's the worst. When you get taken, you're not expecting to go. You know, usually you want to know when you're going to the ghetto, like, I'm going to see some wild shit. I got to prepare myself. I'm going to see something crazy. When you're taken, it's different. I had a limousine driver. It was after a show. It was late at night. It was like 3 in the morning. I had a limousine driver. He was a nice guy talking to me and shit. Oh, hey, where you from, dog? D.C.? Word? That's a rough city, man. And his cell phone started ringing. Hold on one second. Hello? Oh, what's up, nigga? What? What the fuck? Stole that? What? What the fuck? No! 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 Fuck that, nigga. Fuck it. I'm on my way. Hey. I gotta make a stop real quick at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I didn't know he was taking me to the ghetto at first. I started looking out the window. I was like, what the fuck? Is gun store, gun store, liquor store, gun store. Where the fuck are you taking me? <laughs> this don't look good. He didn't say shit. Just pulled up in front of an old rickety building that looked like a project. Now, I've never been there before. I'm not sure if it was a project, but it certainly had all the familiar symptoms of a project. <laughs> a, a, a fucking crackhead ran this way. <laughs> And then, and then another one jumped out of a tree and shit. <laughs> and I said, I'll be right back. <laughs> and left me. Took the keys with him, just left me. At three o'clock in the morning, in front of a project, in a fucking limousine. <laughs> this was not good. I was like, man, I gotta look around and see if I can see some landmarks and figure out where I'm at. I might have to escape on foot. Now, this is when I knew I was in a bad neighborhood. You only see this in the worst neighborhoods. Remember, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I look out the window. It was a fucking baby standing on a corner. Look at this. <laughs> and the baby, the baby didn't even look scared. He was just standing there. I mean, it made me sad, it made me sad, really. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to help the baby. <laughs> well, mm, I don't trust you either, I'm sorry. Click. Click. The old baby on the corner trick, eh? I'm not gonna fall for that shit. So where's this limousine driver? You know, I stopped feeling bad. As time goes by, I start feeling worse. Like, man, what is wrong with me? What the hell's wrong? I'm scared of a baby. And this baby could be in trouble. He might need my help. I got to do something. But I wasn't going to get out the car. I'm serious, man. I just cracked the window a little bit. There's an old limousine. I can roll it down. <laughs> hey, baby. Baby, go home, man. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. What the fuck are you doing up? The baby said, I'm selling weed, nigga. I said, oh, shit. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to buy two bags from the car. Let me get two, let me get two from the Got back in the car and rolled me a joint, man. So, that shit was scary, man. Every once in a while, like a crack kid would come up to the car and look in the window. It was like Jurassic Park and shit. He'd be looking on the car. Hey, get out of here, Cracky. <laughs> that baby was still standing there, man. That's what it then I started feeling bad again. Yeah, weed make you feel guilty sometimes, you know. Man, what is wrong with me, man? I have just bought weed from, a, from an infant. I can't condone this kind of behavior. What am I thinking? I can't let the fear ruin my morals. 
got to do something. <laughs> hey, baby, <laughs> stop selling weed, all right? You got your whole life ahead of you. He said, fuck you, nigga, I got kids to feed. I said, God, damn it. Sam. <laughs> and just at that very moment, one of the crackheads was running across the street and got hit by a car. I know it was a hit and run. The police did it. <laughs> That's all right, they sprinkled some crack on him, he got back up. <laughs> trip off of being a celebrity. I don't like it. I don't trust it. There's one minute they all love you, the next thing you know, you're in front of that courthouse dancing on top of a car just trying to figure out what the fuck happened to you. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. The timing of this Michael Jackson shit is what makes me doubt it. Every time this war is going out of control or the economy gets bad or something is wrong with the world at large, it's always these moments in history that Michael Jackson will coincidentally jerk off a kid. This is getting a little ridiculous. Like, are you planning this shit? Do you have meetings? Michael, thank you for coming. As you know, Michael, the war has not been going as well as we expected. There's been a lot of hiccups, and the public is asking us a lot of questions, of course, and... Well, Michael, there's no nice way to say this, and all I know how to do is be direct, so let me just be direct. We're going to need you to jerk off another child, Mike. I'm sorry. I am sorry. But it would really help out. Or maybe he did it. Who knows? Who knows? That's the thing. That's what I wanted to say. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Mike, God, and this little boy know. That's, that's about it. That's about it. The only reason that I can even talk about this shit is because everybody's speculating. They all think he did it. And I don't think he did it. I'm alone in this. I don't think he did it. I'm not going to say I don't think he did it. That's too strong. <laughs> Let me just say I am reserving judgment until all the facts come out. But so far from what I heard, I mean, the kid said he was dying of cancer. He was in Make-A-Wish Foundation. He claims he had two weeks to live, and it was his dying wish to meet Michael Jackson. Come on, man, give me a fucking break. This kid is 10 years old, he don't remember Thriller. The fuck you want to meet Michael Jackson for, honestly? I remember Thriller and I just like kinda want to meet this nigga. Like, I wouldn't break an appointment to meet him, I'll put it that way. I'd have to already be free. That's ridiculous, it's like if I'm dying in two weeks and go, oh, mama, oh, get me in a room with Chubby Chuckle. I wouldn't want to meet that motherfucker. I'd, my lay is two weeks, why not Usher or somebody like this? So then the kid claims, he goes to Michael's house. This is where it all gets crazy. I don't, like, you know, he does everything you'd expect at Michael's house. They uh, climb trees and rode roller coasters and Ferris wheels. The chef made cookies, pies and cakes. They was petting a monkey and the giraffe, sang songs, kid shit. And in the middle of all this childlike activity, for some reason, Mike pulled out some wine and some pills <laughs> and sucked this kid's dick. Folks, it hurts me to say it. And the kid had the nerve to call that abuse. Said, Motherfucker, that is a good host. God damn, what else do you want? What else do you want? I'm lucky to get a glass of a, a grape drink at my friend's house. I don't know the roller coaster ride my dick sucked. Mike must be confused like I brought you in my house, I fed you, I sucked your dick, and this is how you repay me, motherfucker. This was your wish, not mine. I thought you were dying in two weeks. What happened to that motherfucker? Was, I've been in court for a year and a half. You get strong every time I see you. <laughs> uh, <wouldn't> that, <laughs> this is fucked up. I shouldn't even say this fuck. Wouldn't it be some ironic shit if they found out through this case that the cure for cancer was Michael Jackson sucking your dick somehow? <laughs> like if Mike had powers like Green Mile and all the kids like, please, Mike, suck our dicks. Mm, never again. We didn't appreciate it. Can we at least study your saliva? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Please, Mike. <laughs> this just doesn't stop, though. It just doesn't stop. And the only reason I can talk about Mike is because he's a freak. He's a freak. 
That's why people let you talk about it. Because if I brought up Catholic priest fucking kids, it'd get quiet as shit. But, but when Michael Jackson does it, it's okay because he's a freak. His face is all cut up. But just remember, when you look at that thing that he calls his face, that he did that for you somehow. Somehow he thought you might, maybe it'll help. Maybe people will like me more if I turn myself into a white, ghoulish white creature. I don't know what the fuck it is, but he did it for you. And I appreciate the gesture, Michael Jackson, if you're watching this. I appreciate that gesture, and I want you to know, fuck everybody, Dave Chappelle understands. Because you want to know something? I'm getting some work done. Surprise, yes. Nothing major. You would never know if I didn't tell you, but it's some shit I'm insecure about that I want to work on. If you must know, I'm getting Botox done on my balls to get these wrinkles out. Finally, <laughs> have these shit smooth as eggs. No, oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. You know, it's funny the time I asked the crowd if pussy was an offensive word. And the lady, the lady that was a back was like, well, she was uncomfortable with it. But there was a guy in the balcony. And he didn't say it to me, but he said it when the was quiet like this. So everybody heard him. He was like, it's delicious. <laughs>
punched her face there. <laughs> he didn't like me. That's why she did that. You know better than that. What were you thinking? You got to tell what's going on. And then he was just, he was so, he was so thuggy about his answer that he said, chills to the room. <laughs> he was like, oh, oh, because, because, I think because, because she ain't coming. <laughs>
by the time we got home, the little man was asleep. She got bubbled up and took off to the bed. And I acted like, you know, I just stopped acting like I was sleeping. I just went upstairs. And by the time I came up, she was changing for bed. And I can't even tell you why she really mad. She, she comes up and you walk in the room. She lets him see go with me. <laughs> naked girls showing their breasts. Be like a white dude in a horror movie. I better investigate. I'm gonna wanna see for myself. Pity Ball's a weird place. I'm not saying it's a good place to hang out. I, I go there every once in a while. But it's a weird place. They got weird morality. One time I walked in Titty Ball's, all these guys coming in, right? Out of all these dudes, the bouncer picked me out the crowd, started yelling at me. Hey, 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 buddy. Sir, sir. You want to take your hat off? Huh? It's disrespectful to the ladies. <laughs> yeah, I can shove a 20 up her ass, but I better not have a hat on when I do it. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Here you go, Bubbles. <laughs> Forgive me for the hat thing. You know why those bars are so popular now? It's because men don't know how to deal with women in reality. So sometimes we got to take the fantasy road. The reality of the situation is very grim. <laughs> women have made a lot of progress in a short period of time, man. It changed everything. I can't deal in relationships anymore. I broke up with my girl. I'm out of Shawshank. I'm free. <laughs> I don't want to go back. <laughs> Couldn't even argue with her. You should be able to argue. If you have an issue in a relationship, you should be able to argue that issue out, right? But see, ladies, you got to stick to the fucking issue. You guys take arguments everywhere just to win them. 
before I know that ever gets done. You be arguing about the dishes, baby. Baby, could you wash your dish at least before you put it in the sink? Premature ejaculator? Damn. <laughs> now, why you gotta bring that up? I don't even believe in that. I don't. If I come, man, it was right on time. That's what I said. As far as I'm concerned, I can't come fast enough. And I'm sick of being vilified all the time. David, how could you? How could you come? I was fucking. Well, what were you trying to do, huh? Said, come? Well, I beat you. You gotta work on your time, baby. I'm down to a minute 20. You're mad at me because I have different goals and sex. I'm a speed fucker. I'm just trying to hit my best time. It's like the Olympics. And now for the dismount. It wasn't all bad. It's never all bad. You won't stay if it's all bad. Well, nah, that's not true, but I, I wouldn't. She, yeah, we had fun. We used to watch porn together. That's how cool she was. It, oh, you know, it seems nasty, but it was fun. We learned about each other. She learned about me. <laughs> One time we was watching porn. I'll never forget this time. The first, the first scene in this movie was hardcore. Two guys, one girl going at it. I fast forward right through that. I did, it was too much for my senses. <laughs> the scene after that was these two girls and this guy. And you know I stopped for a minute. I had to see what this was all about. And she noticed. She said, what is that? Now, why, why does that disgust you? Two men and one woman. The men aren't touching each other, but the women are. The two women, those men touch each other. The two men don't touch each other. Why is that nasty to men? And I'll tell you why. Now, ladies, you can call me crazy, but I think every, every straight man has a rule. <laughs> that would be the one penis per fantasy rule. <laughs> my dick is the star of my fantasy. Nobody else's dick is guest starring in my shit. This is a Dave Chappelle joint. You gotta look at the whole picture, man. Now you get two girls and a guy in a room together. That, boy, that's something else. That's fucking holding and hugging, friendship and helping, teamwork at its very, very best, my friends. You get two guys and a girl in a room. It's the wrong kind of teamwork. It's downright brutal, if you ask me. I'll pull her hair. I'll smack her ass. That poor woman looked like a chicken on a rotisserie and said, help me! Here I got my soda too! My life. It's too much shit out there to stress you out. This whole world is drug infested. Hate infested, drug infested world. Hate drugs. I heard the worst drug story. You know what my friend told me? You know what he's dealing with? His landlord is hooked on crack. That's, that's terrible. That's pressure. Your landlord's hooked on crack. That means you've got to have the rent. <laughs> you come around all the time. I got the rent. It's not even due yet. It's the 10th. Come on, I need it. <laughs> Let me just get $20 of it now and then uh, just give me the rest of the end of the month. Every couple of hours. Hey, look, I'm going to need some more of the rent. This building's falling apart. Things came up. Comes home early from a party. Landlord's in the crib going through his shit. What are you doing in my house? Ah! Where's the sink? I came to fix it. It's in the kitchen. I thought it was in the drawer. I'll fix it tomorrow when I come for the rent. <laughs> you know what I hate about drugs? I hate when like people my age and older get hooked on crack. I hate that shit. You're too, you're too old to be experimenting with the drugs at a certain point. You should be past that. You ain't doing it by a certain point. You're just missing. <laughs> drugs are really for old people anyway. You're 75. You've earned the right. Shit, I'm, if I was 75, I'd do coke, heroin, everything. I wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> I'd be walking down the street. They'd be like, boy, that old man is tripping. can't do 
everything. Maybe weed. You're going to do something, do a little weed. Smoke some weed. Weed's not as bad as everything else. So weed is a background substance. You know I mean, you can smoke some herb and still function. And you ain't crisp. But you'll function. <laughs> Nothing higher than weed, though. I made that mistake one time. I, I was at a party. Some guy gave me some shit. He's like, here, man, take this. It's fucking mushrooms. <laughs> I took it. I forgot all about it, you know. Then a couple days later, I found that shit in my pocket. I'm thinking, why not? Because I'm thinking it's like weed. Some background shit. I planned my whole day out like it was weed. <laughs> chew this shit up, then I'll go to the barbershop, get my hair cut, and then I'll see a movie. <laughs> I chewed it up. So far, so good. <laughs> then I was in a barbershop, like an hour later. And it's funny, because I was just thinking to myself, I was like, ooh, this stuff sucks. <laughs> Tastes like athlete's foot. <laughs> I feel sick, but I'm not really high. Then I looked in the mirror. I saw the barber's reflection, man. It looked like, it looked like a big penis was cutting my hair. I freaked out. I started talking to myself, Dave, calm down. You're on drugs. This is what drugs do. Okay, you know that there is no way that a penis can cut hair. <laughs> but I started freaking out, man. I just couldn't take it anymore. I jumped out the chair, half my hair was cut. I didn't care. I, I, didn't. I just gave a barber a handful of money. Balls opened up. Anyway, I...